Hey, welcome back to another video here on Free Will Photos. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at creating a gradient map so we can color grade an image. Now, if you're not familiar with gradient maps, then that's okay, but just note that there are gradient map adjustments inside of Photoshop and Affinity Photo. It just doesn't exist like that inside of On One Photo Raw. So what we're gonna do is create it manually. I also have some cool color theory websites that I wanna share with you because if you're going to talk about color grading, then we should probably take a look at color theory and just make it simple for everyone. Don't worry if you're not into color theory, This these websites make it super easy for you to follow along. And then last but not least, I am not sponsored by any of these programs that I'm uh, endorsing or just sharing with you, uh, but I am an affiliate for On One Photo Raw. So if you wanna support this channel, you can check the description box below. If you haven't already purchased On One Photo Raw by purchasing through that link, it does support this channel at no extra cost to you. And if you decide to pick up anything else from the On One Photo Raw store, then I will also get a small commission for that, again, at no extra cost to you. So with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into today's video. So just as a quick general rule of thumb, you should probably be looking to apply a color grade at the end of your edit. You don't want to do this first. I guess you could if that's what you want to do, but typically you want to do this towards the end of your edit, if not the last thing at, of your edit. Uh, for a lot of reasons that I will show you inside of the tutorial here, but I just wanted to make sure that I shared that up front with you, that this is definitely something you want to do towards the end of your edit. So here we are inside of the computer. And since on one does not have a gradient map, we're going to have to create it using a few photo filters. So first thing that we're gonna do is click add filter, go to add a photo filter, and we're just gonna turn the amount all the way down to zero, all right? We want the amount to stay at zero for this. And then we're going to label this one shadows. So that way we know that this is going to apply to just our shadows. Now, the next place that you're gonna go is the settings icon. This is gonna bring up your blend options and your apply to. All we wanna do is click on apply to and select shadows. All right, so now that's just telling on one, whatever filter or whatever effect we add into this filter, apply it to just the shadows, all right? Now, you want to pull your range all the way up to 100%. And you also want to pull your highlights all the way up to 100%. This is going to essentially add this particular effect into everything that On One thinks is a shadow. And this is going to remove it from everything that On One thinks is a highlight. That's why you want to pull these two things up to 100%. That way we're impacting just our shadows. And you don't want to pull up your shadows because then you'll just be putting it into the shadows. Okay. So now that we have that. We're gonna hit add filter again, go back to photo filter, and this time we're going to create midtones. Okay, so I have that labeled as midtones. Again, I'm gonna pull my amount all the way down. The reason we're doing this is just so it's easier for us to see what we add in later. All right, uh, now I'm gonna hit the gear icon one more time. I'm going to click on apply to, and you guessed it. We're going to add this to the midtones. Now, this is telling on one we want this to go into the midtones. Now, when it comes to midtones, you want to leave your range probably where it's at is fine because you're going to have to blend this later, and you'll see that when we go to apply the actual color grade. Uh, so that's fine. However, with the midtones, because you want it to stay in the mids, you're going to want to pull your highlights and your shadows all the way up to 100%. This is gonna tell on one, anything you think is a highlight, leave this, uh, this color adjustment that we're gonna add, leave that out of the highlights and the shadows and only put it into whatever I, f I identify as the range uh, selecting for the midtones, all right? That's essentially what that, that, that's doing. So now that you have that set, we're gonna go ahead and close that one. And we're going to add our last one for the highlights. So again, add another photo filter. This time we'll call it highlights. 
and then we're going to click on uh, or remove our amount, click on the gear icon under apply to, we're going to select highlights. And this time you don't even really have to mess with the shadows uh, as far as I can tell, but based off of your image, you may have to adjust this. And then, uh, but what you do want to do is pull up the range, pull range all the way up to 100%. And you'll have to play around with this a little bit later. But for the baseline, you definitely want to turn that up to 100%. So now that you have your three gradient stops, essentially, because that's what we're creating, right? Uh, in most photography software, there is a gradient stop from the shadows to the midtones to the highlights. And we have to manually create that in on one. So that's essentially what we have here. It's a little bit more work, but it works approximately the same. All right. I won't lie to you and tell you it works exactly the same. Uh, it would be nice if on one adds a gradient filter. Um, and I guess now would be a good time to show you. If you want it to make this very simple, you can use color balance. Now, color balance gives you the gradient stops between highlight, midtones, and shadows, except for you don't get to control what on one identifies as a highlight, a midtone, or a shadow, uh, like you do with these. So there's some limitations to doing it this way. And to me, the biggest limitation is you can't select the color that you want to put in there. You're going to see later that we're going to be able to put the exact color we want inside of each of these, where with this, the only thing you can do is drag a slider. So I don't recommend this method, but this is a way of color grading your photo uh, and giving you some control to do that. Let's close that out and we're going to move on to the next step. So it dawned on me. Not everyone knows about color theory, which is why I want to show you this resource called hexcolorpedia.com. It's completely free to use. I'm not sponsored. It's just a tool that I think is extremely beneficial. Now to use this tool, all you have to do is go over to the website. The link is in the description box below. So all you have to do is click it and it'll bring you to a website that looks similar to this. What you'll do is click the eyedropper tool, select whatever color you want. Now this is the color that I want to add to the gradient. So I'm not going to select that. But once you select the color, you can click and drag here and then you click on choose. Once you select whatever your color is, it's going to bring you to a page that looks just like this. And on this page, there's two very important things. First, you get some general information about the color you selected, which one of those main things that you get is the complement color as well as the hex code. You also get the hex code of the color up here. I meant to mention that. But what you get on this page that we're going to be using today is the schemes. Now, up here at the top, you have a little navigation bar. And if you click on schemes, it is going to forward you down to the color scheme section. And as you can see, it gives you the monochromatic scheme. So if you want to go in all blues, then you can. It gives you a darker version of the monochromatic scheme. And then it gives you all these other color theory rules that you can use. So don't be afraid to come in here and explore. But today, what I'm going to be using is the split complementary theme when I edit my image. So another website that you can use is Adobe Color. Again, not sponsored by them, just a free tool that I think is super helpful. And the link is in the description box as well. Now, when you come to the Adobe Color website, there are all of the color theory rules that I kind of showed you on the Hex Colorpedia website. The only difference with this website and the reason why I want to show it to you is with the extract theme feature, you can drag a photo right in to Adobe Color and it allows you to create your own color palettes, getting the hex code for the colors that you select inside of your own image. And you can also use the color mode over here to kind of change and modify the way 
that it it analyzes the photo to provide you some of these templates. But if you want to move it around, uh, if you don't like a color that's selected, you can just click these little icons in the middle of the image and you can make whatever color you want uh, for your color palette. But what's really cool is you can come over here to the extract gradient tool and it's going to go from the brightest color that it can find that's not white and say, OK, this is the brightest color in the image. And then it's going to find whatever the middle tone is between the darkest tone in the image or the darkest color in the image. So this does a lot of the heavy lifting. So if you're like, I see an image, I really want to get that color grade, but I'm not sure what colors they're using. Just drag and drop the image into uh, Adobe Color and you can grab that color scheme. So uh, and you get the hex codes down here at the bottom and then you can also see what that looks like here. Now we're going to add the gradient map to our image. Now I'm using snapshots to help me stay in line with this tutorial. So I'm going to be clicking through these throughout the remainder of the tutorial. However, the concept I will explain as best as I possibly can as I go through this. So we're going to start with the shadows and we're going to open this up. As you can see, I applied my preset to this particular snapshot. And at the end of the preset, I put GM in parentheses. That just lets me know this is a gradient map. And you'll see why that's important later. Now, I'm going to click on color inside of my shadows. And this is going to give me my RGB sliders because that's the last option that I had selected. If you're on a Mac, this is how that works. Now, if you're on a PC, you're going to get something that looks similar to the spectrum. But over in the far right hand side, you should see something that looks like a hex code. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is take my color. I want to put that blue color that I had inside of the hex code. I'm just going to enter the number without the pound sign or the hash sign, whatever you want to call that sign, depending on your uh, generation. But we're going to go ahead and just enter in that color. And once I have the letters entered, I'm going to hit the actual enter or return key that's going to pull up that color. And then I'm going to move on to the next one. So for my midtones, I want to include that other color. So this is the middle color on my complementary um, chart here. So I'm going to add that one in, hit enter, and it should have jumped into here, but it didn't. So let me just make sure I didn't change my shadows, which I did. So make sure that you are selecting uh, every time you have to click zero EC. Make sure that you click out and then open up the next effect and click color and now I'm changing the color for my midtones. So EC9F19 is that color. So now that's good. I'm going to close that one, open up highlights, click on color. And now I'm going to add the color that I need for this. So EC1966, enter. And now I have all three of my colors in here and I can close this out. So obviously nothing has changed. The reason for that is our amounts are still set to zero. Now I can just very easily start blending this in and I am going to crank this up, right? So I'm now including some of that blue into my shadows, as you can see. So now I'm going to go to midtones and I'm going to increase this orange color into my midtones and I'm going to click on the uh, off and on and you can see what's happening. It's changing the color of my image overall. And now I'm going to go to my highlights and I'm going to select the amount and I'm going to bring in this amount. Now you can see this really changes the image and I'm, I'm going to crank it up really, really high. So you have a few options of how you can blend this effect stack with your image. Now I want you to note that you want to do this on its own layer. Right now, I am working off of a single layer. I don't have any exposure effects in here, 
So what I'm about to do isn't going to impact the image in that direction. However, I will show you how you can edit this uh, gradient map into your image without impacting your exposure settings. So stay tuned for that, uh, or you can just jump around in the chapters to get to that location. Now, what you can do is pull down on the opacity slider here. As you can see, that just blends it in, and maybe this will get you to your desired effect. Or what you can do is hit the gear setting here, and you can come to the blend modes, and the two that I recommend with this effect is either overlay or soft light. Overlay is gonna be a little bit more punchy on the contrast side where soft light is a little less subtle, but still contrasty and punchy. Now, I have this removed from the skin tones. If I didn't, then I would have this all over the image. So if you are doing this for a portrait, I recommend you try your best to preserve the skin tones and on one makes it fairly simple for you to pull this skin tone slider, but make sure that you are on the uh, blend settings for your effect stack, all right? Your blend settings for your effect stack. You don't wanna do this on the individual effects in your stack because that's just gonna take forever. You wanna do this on the effect settings for your blend stack. I can't footstep that enough. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have questions about that. Now that you have your color grade, you can look at the before and after. As you can see, I have added in the color grade that I want it to, to this image. If for whatever reason you are working on an image and you have all of your exposure settings, well, what you're going to have to do is a different process. So let's go ahead and dive into that. So here we are on another snapshot where all I have is a tone enhancer filter and I just cranked up on the uh, brightness here or the exposure. And I'm just trying to show you that if you were to have all of your settings, you know, maybe you open up some shadows, reduce some highlights, threw in some contrast, whatever you did to your image. Now, if I turn this off and on, you can see that I have my image uh, with the exposure setting. But now you want to color grade this. If you use the method that I showed previously, when you come to the effect stack here, and you change this to soft light, you are now changing all of the effects in this stack over to soft light blend mode. That may not be what you want to do, and I don't recommend this anyhow. Uh, and then you also will not want to pull this away from all the skin tones, although this does look kind of good in, in this particular image, but it may not work for your image, all right? So if that is the case, we're gonna leave this on normal. We'll close out of the blend settings here. And we're going to create a duplicate on the layer stack. So click the layer icon to duplicate your uh, image. And now I have two layers. I have the original, which has all of my snapshots in it. And then I have the top layer here that is my exposure. So uh, once my computer catches up, there we go, exposure. So I have exposure, and now I need to duplicate this exposure layer again, right? With just my exposure settings. So I'm going to duplicate this one more time, and I am going to label this exposure. Once my computer catches up, there we go. Exposure two, and hit enter, all right? Now I am going to turn off this original layer because you may not need to do this, but for the tutorial purpose where all my snapshots are stored inside of this original layer, I need to keep that, all right, for, for my own sake. Now, for you, maybe you just have these two exposure adjustments. You have not applied any color grading to this. This is why I'm recommending that you do this on the back end of your color correction or your uh, post-processing. Like this should be right before you're ready to export the image because you've made all of your exposure adjustments, you've made all of your skin corrections, you've done all of that work. Now you just wanna kind of give it a grade, like make it look a certain way 
uh, add your style, if you will. So I have two identical copies of my exposure settings. This is just an on one ism. You have to do that. Make sure the blue dot or whatever color dot you have here is highlighted. Right click on the top one and click new stamped layer. Okay. I don't recommend you merge visible. Just make it a new stamped layer. And once you have this uh, new stamped layer, we're going to apply our color grade preset. So label this new stamped expo layer. That's what I'm just going to call it. And now I can turn off all of these underlying layers. Now, depending on how you want to work, you could delete these if you so choose. Uh, I recommend you keep the one, at least one of the layers, because one of these is going to have all of your non-destructive edits. If you delete that, then you just worked in a destructive workflow. I don't recommend that. So you could delete one, uh, which I will delete that one because I don't need the second one. Now, don't worry. Uh oh. Sorry about that. I deleted the wrong one. Uh, make sure you're clicking on the right stuff to delete the right stuff. All right, now I am going to click on exposure to, and I'm just going to delete that because I don't need that layer. And as you can see, I still have my layer stack, all of my exposure settings in there. But the beauty of this is I have a new uh, effect palette that I can work off of. I'm going to go ahead and click on my preset that I made for this tutorial. It's called Tut Color Grade. And when I click that, it's going to bring my color grade onto the image. Now, I've already included my soft light blend mode, which is why it didn't come in looking like that. It came in looking like I wanted it to. And then I've also removed this from the skin tones. OK, now I'm going to show how you can do this. If you were to apply the preset that did not have any color grading done and this is where you want it to start. Now, you know, forgive me, the preset that I made, I had some local adjustments in it, but you don't need that. Uh, now, as you can see, I have GM on all of these. Uh, this is my personal color grading uh, workspace. And I want this because sometimes uh, if I have GM, that just stands for gradient map. That lets me know that this is a part of my gradient map. And if I delete one, I mess up my map. So uh, get into the habit of labeling your stuff. If you start to build things, uh, it's just good to do that. All right. Um, with that being said, when my gradient maps are applied to the image, I want to clearly be able to see where my other effects are. So if I had more effects down here, then I would know, OK, those are effects for the actual image uh, building or it's for the gradient map. Now I can just come in here and through the exact same process. This time I'm just going to click on some colors that I have in my swatch and I'll increase the amount and I'm just going to make my gradient the way that I want it to be made. Uh, we'll even throw some green in this one. Why not? OK. Uh, and then, yeah, I like yellow. So now I have my gradient map uh, developed and now I can I can just click on my gear icon for my effects module, click the blend mode, choose overlay or a soft light and it's already pulled away from the skin. The reason this doesn't look good is because the color harmony is just not there. However, I can pull down the opacity of this on my image independently from all of my other layers uh, in here. So this is a great way of blending this. And if you want to leave this at 100%, you can blend. Let's say I have this exposure layer here. I can pull down on my opacity slider. And now I am blending in this underlying image uh, with my entire uh, canvas, if you will, because this is the canvas. These are the layers that make up your canvas. If you turn off the layers, you can see that my canvas is blank. And as I turn on the layers, I fill out that canvas. 
And you can see with my opacity, that's just how much of this particular affected layer is blending in with my canvas or the other layers on my canvas. So there you go. There's the down and dirty way of creating a gradient map inside of Alma Photo Raw. Hopefully you liked this video. If you did or found the value of the content helpful, smash the like button so this can get into the eyes of other people who would find value in this type of content. If you are new here, my name is Chris. I'm the content creator. I make videos centered around Alma Photo Raw to help new photographers and advanced photographers learn how to use the software so they can get their edits out and into the world. If that's something you're interested in, smash the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. If you want to learn more about the photo filter, click the video on the left. If you want to watch a video that YouTube thinks is right for you, click the video on the right. And until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.